The goddess Pistis Sophia can be thought of as knowledge from the perimeter, interacting with the utmost center, and then re-interacting with the outermost perimeter, giving knowledge of the total system. In a previous video, we analyzed how the phi ratio ties directly into how electromagnetic waves interact with each other and create different harmonics that are able to interact with one another. This feature of the phi ratio seems to be universal in that when you have a ratio of 0.618, you're able to always continuously divide and get a self-similar piece to the original piece. And this relates to the Gnostic goddess Sophia, because if you look at the word or name, Sophia, you see that the letters phi have the root of this name. And with that, if we look at her full name, Pistis Sophia, I propose that what this is really representing is the shape of a torsion field. Because if you take the first part of her name, Pistis, and take the first two letters, Pi, you get Pi. And Pi could be seen as the circumference of the circle, or the outer perimeter. Or, in torsion physics, this would be the outer layer of the double layer that creates an individuated unit within the greater structure that we call the universe. With that said, the reason I say that Pistis Sophia is a representation of total knowledge from the center at the periphery and then back into the center is because of the way that a torsion field interacts with its environment. You see, a torsion field naturally oscillates between its north pole and its south pole, moving energy around the center of itself, back around the outer perimeter in a circle-like structure until eventually you're reaching back at the top pole where it swirls downwards, meeting the utmost center. And at that utmost center, this is where the magic happens. Because when two waves collapse on each other, what happens is a type of inner wave is created that many call a scalar wave or a longitudinal wave. And these longitudinal waves exist within the up and down waves we all come to understand and know. These are the waves that move in an up and down motion like waves on top of the ocean. However, there's another aspect to all waves, and that's the longitudinal or scalar aspect. Looking here at the ocean as it swells under the seashore, you can see that once the waves crest, they start to roll back in towards the ocean. However, there are still waves coming in towards those retracting waves. And what you see is that the incoming waves end up picking up these retracting waves and sort of riding with them, adding to the structure without actually interfering with it. It turns out this is exactly how electromagnetic waves work, especially within the fourth state of matter, plasma. And to tie that back into what we were talking about with a Pistis Sophia system, Pistis Sophia could be thought of as a complete system that each and every entity shares. Why do I see each and every entity? Well, because if you look at what a torsion field allows a individual to have, it's basically an individuated experience. And this individual experience is only possible because a torsion field gives that center point within a torsion field its own isolated universe to play with. Now, it still exists within the greater structure, for instance, us within the Earth, but we are individuated agents of consciousness acting on our own interests in ways that further our own personal goals. And it's our jobs as humans to understand life from an individuated perspective. And to also understand that as individuals, we're part of that greater whole, even if we don't feel like it or others don't recognize it when we do. And to build on what we were just talking about, how all torsion fields collapse in their center, each and every cell in your body is also a torsion field. And where does that collapse? Well, 
quite possibly within your DNA. And then also each one of your cells is reporting back to your greater energy field, which itself is a torsion field in shape. And your torsion field is being driven by your heart. And your heart is circulating all of your blood through your body, which is by no mistake called plasma. While this plasma orbits through the body, or is pushed through the body, there's an electric charge added to the iron within our blood. And this iron is what is creating our electric field. And when I say they charge the tiny iron pyramids in our blood, to go further with that, it's quite possible that at the tip of these little iron pyramids, there's a tiny spark or an electron that's being generated as it flows through the body. This makes human beings basically an electric light being. And in that way, not only are we a fractal of the Earth, but we're fractals of the Sun. And the Sun is a fractal of the galaxy. And the galaxy, a fractal of the universe. And the universe is actually a fractal of the electron. So what is this electron then, and how does it actually interact with everything in the universe? Well, the idea is that arising from what Maxwell Planck has deemed the Planck length, is a sort of bubbling energy that many call the zero point energy field or the ether. Both are probably not correct, but the idea is that from that Planck length, there's a sort of bubbling or a return point, or even a inflection point of consciousness, in which all experience is reflected on, coalesced, and then spun back out for another go around. This unique pattern, which is part of the reason a torsion field is a recursive self-sustaining structure, is what creates the knowledge from the periphery in the utmost center and then back out again to give you complete knowledge of the totality of a system or your own individuated Pistis Sophia system. And with that, we also can build on the idea that when the waves collapse in the center of a torsion field and that longitudinal or scalar field is sent out, it in a way escapes the boundaries of the torsion field because just like our example with the waves on the seashore, eventually those waves that crested back in the ocean will flow farther and farther into the middle of the ocean. Scalar waves are the exact same way in that they can go through walls, concrete, dense metal, it doesn't matter because they're not actually part of the up and down frequencies that we exist in normally. So, looking at this picture of a flower of life, if we understand a flower of life as being a multi-dimensional and multi-faceted picture, we can both look at each collection of a seed of life as its own individual torsion field, or we can actually look at each little circle with the dot in the center as a torsion field in the nest of other torsion fields in our reality. But what happens if, let's say, it collapses in the center of this one is that there's a ripple effect that looks just like gravity waves or what we call gravity waves that reaches its neighbor, its neighbor's neighbor, its neighbor's neighbor, and so on until the absolute edge of the universe. And even then, it still expands. This is what's driving the expansion of the universe and also what is giving data to the absolute edge of the universe or the pistis, pistis, from the absolute center of everything, Sophia. And when an entity becomes aware of this, I believe that this is when they become the Christed Pistis Sophia. And this simply means awareness from within, from without, that you are the absolute center point of your reality. This is probably some pretty heavy stuff, but you've always known this. In a later video, I'm gonna start exploring what I've been able to do with this knowledge and how you can use this knowledge for yourself to start to better your life in ways you probably can't even imagine. Because literally, the only way this universe works is you get back what you put out. 
So while you could be in the worst situation of your life, as long as you start now to correct whatever put you in that terrible situation, you begin pulling to you the future you're desiring by taking the actions and steps and are aligning with it in an emotional way that it literally pulls it to you like a tractor beam. And this is actually how manifestation works because there's no other way the universe can work. Because in a fractal universe, the only thing that exists is the original fractal. And who knows where or what that even is at this point, other than a torsion field. Because actually, the ultimate creator probably is that bubbling that we talked about that happens at the Planck length. And that bubbling is probably the return route for the electric charge to move in and out of our reality or imaginary space and become what we have dubbed the electron or the photon, depending on its interaction. And in this way, it is really all one thing. And really, all is one. Thank you for watching. My name is Adam David. And if you've enjoyed this content, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel because every little bit helps. And I really want to reach as many people as I can with this message because I truly believe if as many people understand this as possible, we could bring in a new earth like that. Thank you. Bye.